Hello landlords, today we are going to be talking about the new electrical safety regulations which are coming in on the 1st of July and Matt and I are delighted to be joined by Paul Collins from the NICEIC uh, which is the leading voluntary regulatory group for electrical contractors and will be in pole position to give us some insight and understanding about the changes that are coming that are coming in. Paul, firstly welcome and thank you for joining us. Hello, no problem. Hi Matt, hi James, I hope you're both well. Yeah, very good. good. Yeah, it's really good stuff. So thank you again for joining us this morning. And we'll start um, at the beginning um, by asking if you can explain the new electrical safety changes and um, how they differ from what was in place before. OK, yeah, no problem. So over the past three, four years, the government uh, in, in respect of ministries and the housing committees and local government, I think we call them CLG from now on, which for, for ease. Uh, I've been looking at electrical safety in the private rented sector. Um, there has been previous requirements for maintaining properties in a, in a, in a safe condition for electrical, for gas, etc. But in the electrical terms, there's been no real definition of what that means and what that looks like. So from the 1st of June this year, the electrical safety standards in the private rented sector regulations come into force for England, uh, which means from the 1st of July, uh, existing uh, new tenancies will need to have electrical safety checks carried out and for existing tenancies that will need to be in place for uh, 1st of April 2021. So it gives more detail, more clarity of what landlords should be doing to ensure electrical safety. Right. Brilliant. So we're going to be obviously um, serving lots of new documentation this year. Um, do the documents need to be served ahead of a new tenancy in the same way that we currently serve an EPC um, and gas safety? So if, you, if you're uh, um, bringing on a new tenant, then yes, that, that should be provided uh, before the tenancy starts. Um, and also if somebody requests to see a copy of that in, in advance, you know, to make sure there's something in place, I think that the, the requirement is 28 days um, to, to provide that. So yeah, documents should be provided before tenancy starts. Fantastic. Um, so say a landlord has a report which has come back with recommendations. Um, mm -hmm. Is it enough to serve on the tenant as it is or are they obliged to carry out the work before starting a new tenancy, which could potentially delay a tenancy start date? Well, that would depend. You know, that would depend on the recommendations that come back. You, you have uh, various codes, C1, C2 and C3 and further investigation. So if it come back with a C1 that the installation or there was an issue with the installation uh, that needed urgent attention, then that should really be addressed you know, as, as, as soon as possible. You know, there is a danger present. Um, if it's a, a C3, for example, that means that the installation doesn't meet today's standards, but it doesn't mean that it's not satisfactory or unsafe for, for use. So it would depend, you know, on, on the severity of the issues that were, were found during the inspection. OK, so potentially wouldn't necessarily delay. That's good to know. But obviously we need to check into those reports when they come back. Um, what would the penalties be for non-compliance? Worst case scenario for a landlord is uh, the local authority can fine the, uh, the landlord up to £30,000 for, for non-compliance yep. with the regulation but also the local authority can actually uh, engage a, a contractor to put the work right. If there is an issue, if there is something found that, that is unsafe and a landlord hasn't you know, done anything about it or met their obligations, the local authority can engage somebody to do that and then pass that charge back on to the landlord. Okay. It's quite significant then, isn't it? So mm. what, what actually goes into the electrical safety condition report? You mentioned the, um, the C1, C2, C3s. How do you get to that stage and what, what actually goes into it? So the, the electrician undertaking the inspection will have uh, um, uh, access to guidance, industry guidance that has been produced. Electrical Safety First produces what's called Best Practice Guide number four. Uh, that Best Practice Guide lists uh, the number of codes, the different codes that we have, and will give you examples of those. So from, from an electri electrician's perspective, if I've got a, a broken socket and I can access live parts, it's dangerous. You know, I give that a C1 and that's all detailed and all identified in the best practice guide. It's free of charge. You know, it's easy to download electronically available. So we, we recommend that electricians use best practice guide number four as their, as their way of coding. It gives consistency across contractors. And also you can show the landlord, you know, you can say, OK, you've got a problem here. This is why it's a problem. This is what we need to do about it. And, you know, you, you can back that up with industry agreed uh, codes. Hmm. No, that's good. I mean, I you know it, it's going to be a big change for some people that maybe haven't done anything like this for for, for a long time um you know i think that what we've seen initially from the people that have done it is there have been quite a lot of upgrades to that over 
over over the last few years anyway so some people that maybe have not checked their electrics for you know between five and ten years are suddenly quite a way mm. behind with some of the latest standards but i yeah. think ultimately this will improve the the standard of um of the electrics in in, in most properties and i think that's probably that's what it would be a good thing i would have thought yeah, absolutely. It's it's going to take the installations that haven't been either ever inspected and, and tested, mm. uh, looked at, and, and bring them up to a, a more modern standard, uh, which which is a good thing. But yeah, there there is going to be remedial works required in most instances, unless you've got a relatively new installation, mm. uh, and then uh, you know you, you'll be okay with that. But there is going to be work to be done for sure. Yeah. Um, so just going back to another sort of technical point with regards to the tent towards tenancies and things like that. I mean, our understanding is with the existing tenancies that a landlord must carry out uh, the inspection by the 1st of April 2021, as you just said at the start. Um, what happens if a tenancy renews, uh, renews now? Um, would, the te would the landlord then have to wait uh, would they have, have to do the inspection at the start of that renewal tenancy or can they wait until the, the 1st of April, get it done before the 1st of April? I think that's an interesting question. Looking at government guidance, uh, CLG guidance, it isn't, it isn't very clear. They talk about if, if tenancies roll over into periodic tenancies and change in, in that respect. Um, so there, there isn't clarity around that at this time. So, you know, if there's any you know, concern or uncertainty, uncertainty we're really talking about a 12 month period where we need to have these electrical safety checks done. Mm. So it would be worth getting it done sooner rather than later, then, then you're covered. Yeah. Yeah. I guess you would have to kind of uh, summarize that a new tenancy is a new tenancy, whether it's the same tenant or not. If they're signing a new documentation, they should be served potentially with the new, the new regulations. So better to be safe than sorry. Yeah, I think so. Mm. Yeah. Great. Um, and obviously EPCs, we know they last for 10 years. Gas safeties are done every year. How long do these certificates last for? So it's, it's actually a report. It's, it's an inspection report. So we, we have uh, a number of different uh, forms and documents in the electrical industry. A certificate is what we'd issue if we've done installation work. So if we've gone in and rewired the property, we'd issue an electrical installation certificate. Um, but for the private rental sector and, and uh, you know, reports and the electrical safety checks, we can issue an, uh, an EICR, electrical installation condition report. And in the context of the, the regulation, it's valid for up to five years. Now, that's the maximum period. If we have an older installation, we could see that reduced anything, you know, down to months, weeks, depending on the condition. So, yeah, the maximum would be five years. Okay. okay. Oh, that's great. I mean, the, 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 the question that we sort of had um, was... <laughs> Obviously, at the moment, um, people might be reluctant to allow people to do quite extensive work in their homes due to due to COVID and things like that that are going on at the moment. Um, do, do you think that there'll be any allowance for for that um, with regards to getting these bits and pieces done between now and the first of April? Um, and can you see any changes or amendments to the current policy that that are there right now due to come in? Um, well, coming now from the 1st of June but to, to start from the 1st of July okay I think in relation to the, the, the sort of COVID situation that we're in currently I think you know landlords have got to do everything reasonably practical to, to do remedial works and, and if there is something simple broken socket for example you know that shouldn't be a, a major issue but it could be a, a rewire so that will could be a bit more challenging so mm. You know that just needs to be think to, thought about you know on an individual basis there isn't any specific guidelines um, you know, if, if you have to rewire the property, could take two, three, four, five days to do that. So, you know, you could be putting the tenants, uh, you know, uh, not, not, not necessarily at risk, but, you know, it could be very difficult to rewire and live in the property at the same time. So, you know, yeah, give some thought around there. Um, can I see any changes? Not yet, because, it, you know, it is a new set of uh, reg regulation. It's only just been launched. Um, you know, I think the guidance will continue to evolve, the government guidance and, and, mm. and uh, and that will continue as, as questions come up. Um, but in relation to the private rented sector, uh, I don't see any changes just yet. Oh, that's great. And for landlords that might be interested in looking into this a bit more, is there any resource uh, or any way you can suggest that, that they look um, for more information on this? Yeah, so there's, there's a, a couple of uh, sources of information that I can recommend. Uh, on the Ministries of Housing, Communities and Local Government website, there is a number of guidance documents available for landlords. 
for tenants and for local authorities. So you can actually look at the information provided for, for each specific sector. Uh, also recommend Electrical Safety First website. There is some very good guidance around electrical safety uh, for landlords in England, Wales and Scotland that is unique to, to each of the countries. Um, and also on the NICIC website, there is a section for landlords uh, and, and provide information on there. But, so that, that's the sources of information I'd recommend. Brilliant. Well, thanks for, well, thank you for joining us today and, and discussing this, uh, this um, quite... More regulation. Yeah, more regulation. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, in respect of more regulation, yes, it is. But I think what it does is All bring great clarity great. to existing regulation. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And, and, and safe, keeping um, landlords legal and tenants safe is a, is a really important, a really important thing and something which we are uh, keen to pass on to people and, and give them this information. So thank you very much indeed for joining us. Thank and you so much. Uh, uh, we'll, we'll speak soon. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Paul.